With a travel hot plate, who needs room service? Just unpack this single burner appliance and plug it into an electrical outlet in the hotel room. It can be used to warm up soup, fry eggs, or make espresso. It's economical and convenient. No tips necessary. A travel hot plate offers another way to eat on the road. Travelers can whip up something to eat pretty much anywhere there is an electrical outlet. Production starts with steel wire for the heating element. The wire unwinds and travels over rollers. The rollers keep the wire at an even tension as machinery pulls it forward. The machinery winds the wire around a mandrel to produce a tight coil. A blade then chops the coil to the correct length. Each coil will serve as a heating element. A worker slides the coil's ends onto hooks attached to a fixture. The fixture revolves and meets up with an automated welder, which fuses the hook to the heating coil. It welds one hook to each end of the coil. To demonstrate the coil's heating capacity, a technician connects it to an electrical source and it very quickly becomes so hot it glows. A worker is now ready to install the coil in the cast iron burner. Robots pick up the burners using magnetic power and transfer them to a conveyor system. The conveyor pushes the burners forward. In the meantime, a worker threads the coil between posts and an applicator head. This puts the coil in the correct configuration. An automated system then moves the applicator head forward on the production line. A vibrating device applies 16 and a half tons of pressure to pack an insulating compound into the cast iron burners. This compound is made of talcum, magnesite, water, and other ingredients. The applicator head embeds the heating coil within the insulation, allowing the hooks to protrude. This isolates the coil from the cast iron burner to prevent short circuits. A worker coats each burner with a rust-proofing varnish. The burners bake at a temperature of 212 degrees Fahrenheit for 12 hours. This dries the varnish and hardens the insulation in the burners. Out of the oven, a worker welds wires to the protruding hooks, which will connect to a thermostat later. She attaches ceramic sleeves to the wires for electrical insulation. She then spot welds metal connectors to the ends of the wires. She installs an intermediate backplate through which the insulated connectors protrude and screws the backplate in place. Another worker installs a cover plate with numerous holes to vent heat from the burner. She screws a threaded bolt into the hot plate and attaches a ground wire to the center screw. She slides the thermostat onto the threaded bolt and secures the ground wire. She adjusts the position of the thermostat and connects the wires. She now attaches a plastic base and screws a temperature knob into it. She joins the wires to a power cord and stabilizes the connection with a plastic clamp and cover. She installs a metal plate over the exposed wires to encase them within the base structure. She slides rubber feet onto the nubs in the plastic base and applies a label with all the technical details. Using a probe, she confirms that the hot plate is functional, that there is no current leakage, and the wiring is properly isolated from the cast iron burner. A technician brings water to a boil on a randomly selected hot plate and measures the temperature to confirm it heats water consistently. He also aims an infrared camera at the hot burner. The image proves that heat is evenly disseminated across the surface. 
Once it passes all these tests, this travel hot plate is ready to hit the road. It should provide the means to cook food wherever in the world it happens to land.